The first three of Fulio's killers have appeared in court and it's not looking good for them with the judge denying them bond. I'm finding that there is a substantial probability that all three defendants committed the dangerous crimes that they are charged with. With all the evidence brought out against them, it's likely they want to shed tears but are doing a good job of hiding them. From footage of them loading guns before the murder to one of them trying to escape the interrogation room through the ceiling, it keeps getting cray by the minute. But there's a whole lot more, like the Airbnb footage showing them celebrating Fulio's murder or the fact that feds found guns used in a shooting that almost took out Fulio in 2023. Strap in cause this is one wild ride. Fulio's killers in court. Fulio's killers are done, and it wouldn't surprise anyone if they broke down in tears, because it's bad news after bad news for them. First, the judge denied them bond and ruled that they would stay in custody until trial. Even the judge knows that they are cooked. I'm finding that there is a substantial probability that all three defendants committed the dangerous crimes that they are charged with. Court documents filed by the state requested that Isaiah Chance remain in jail without bond as he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Chance had told a Jacksonville Sheriff's Office detective that once he gets off the monitor, he would flee the state and never wants to be seen again. He wasn't the only one being dumb while in custody. Turns out that while in custody, Sean tried to make a run for it in the most hilarious way. According to police records, Sean was placed in an interview room and attempted to escape custody by climbing out through the ceiling. He climbed onto a table and tried to remove the tiles from the room's ceiling. They all now face serious charges. Charges, including premeditated first-degree murder with a firearm and conspiracy to commit premeditated first-degree murder with a firearm. However, Sean Gathright faces additional charges of attempted premeditated murder in the first degree with a firearm and tampering with physical evidence. And since Florida doesn't play when it comes to murder, they may actually get hit with the death penalty just like YNW Melly, who was accused of killing fellow rappers and childhood friends YNW Sack Chaser and YNW Juvie. But unlike Melly, who was accused of killing his close friends, Fulio's killers were his enemies, and they were in the middle of a bloody gang war with Six Block, ATK, and 1200 at the center of the conflict. In the months leading up to his murder, Fulio found himself in the crosshairs of his rivals. Investigators believed that his rising fame and constantly dissing his ops made him a prime target for retaliation. The tension between Six Block and their rivals, ATK, and 1200 had reached a boiling point, and it was only a matter of time before violence erupted. Fulio's murder was dramatic, and the arrest that followed caught the Jacksonville drill scene by surprise. The shocking story begins with a sinister plan hatched in Jacksonville, Florida, as Isaiah Chance and Sean Gathright were caught on camera loading bags full of what prosecutors say were guns and ammunition. You see them carrying a bag large enough to what? Carry two AK-style rifles. Isaiah Chance, Alicia Andrews, Sean Gathright, Davion Murphy, and Rashad Murphy drove to Tampa in two vehicles, a silver Chevy Cruze and a black Chevy Impala. Isaiah Chance and his girlfriend, Alicia Andrews, drove the silver Cruze, and Gathright primarily drove the Black Impala, registered under his mother's name. License plate readers confirmed that both vehicles traveled from Jacksonville to Tampa before the murder and left the area the following afternoon after the murder. The suspects were careful in their planning, ensuring they left no stone unturned. However, they weren't careful enough. On the night of June 23, 2023, Fulio was celebrating his 26th birthday in Tampa. The rapper had publicly advertised his appearances at two Tampa nightclubs, Teaser's Gentleman's Club and Truth 18 nightclub via his Instagram account. This provided the perfect opportunity for the five to track and follow him. Unknown to the rapper, Isaiah Chance and Alicia Andrews, both documented members of ATK, were tracking his every move. Surveillance footage later revealed that Chance and Andrews followed Fulio and his entourage in a silver Chevy Cruze. At Teaser's Gentleman's Club, Chance and Andrews got out of their vehicle, with Chance seen using a cellular phone that the investigation later revealed belonged to Alicia Andrews. This phone was used to communicate with the suspected shooter, Sean Gathright, who was in the black Chevy Impala. The surveillance footage showed Chance wearing a black hoodie with a distinctive red logo, making it easier for investigators to identify him later. The call detail records confirmed that Andrew's phone was constantly communicating with Gathright's phone, establishing a clear link between the two vehicles and their coordinated efforts. The silver Chevy Cruze and the black Chevy Impala then went to Truth 18 nightclub, where Fulio was scheduled to make another appearance. Once again, Chance and Andrews were caught on surveillance video, pulling into the club's back parking lot. Chance was seen using Andrew's phone outside the vehicle, further solidifying their connection to the unfolding plot. The tension peaked as the defendants followed Fulio and his entourage to the final location, the home's two suites. The silver Chevy Cruze, driven by Isaiah Chance and Alicia Andrews, made two passes by the victim's parked vehicles before leaving the scene. This signaled the black Chevy Impala, driven by Sean Gathright, and carrying Rashad Murphy and Davion Murphy to move in for the kill. And you can see the shooters 
are getting in position for their planned out murder. As it turns out, Fulio and his entourage were kept waiting outside by the hotel staff. According to Fulio's driver, Omerta 55, they were trying to check in their room but couldn't due to a glitch in the system. So we got to the hotel, uh, went in. The rooms was already reserved, but I guess they had like a, a glitch in the system or something, so they ain't let us get the room. So then he came back out to the car and we were just chilling. The night was going from bad to worse for Fulio. After being kicked out of his Airbnb party by cops just a few hours earlier, he now couldn't access his booked hotel room. Once his killers were in position, they opened fire, killing the rapper with a handgun and two rifles. Fulio's car sped off immediately after the shots rang out, but it was too late. And they are shooting at Charles now. And you can see that he's the passenger in that car that's moving and trying to flee. Investigators found 31.9 mm spent shell casings at the scene. No rifle casings were recovered, leading them to believe the shooters used brass catchers to collect the spent casings. This level of sophistication indicated that the attack was premeditated and well coordinated. After the homicide, the group retreated to their Airbnb, booked from June 22nd to 24. This Airbnb was equipped with a ring camera at the front door, capturing crucial footage of the defendant's movements. Following the murder, Isaiah Chance was seen stepping out briefly with a champagne flute in his left hand. Davian Murphy was seen carrying a bag in the parking lot and later returning through the front door, passing the camera. Chance and Gathright were seen passing the ring camera multiple times, and their faces and actions were recorded in high definition. Alicia Andrews was also seen leaving the Airbnb, wearing the same clothing she wore during the murder. These images were crucial in piecing together the timeline of events and identifying the suspects. The investigation didn't stop there. Detectives used video surveillance footage to track Sean Gathright's movements after the homicide. Approximately 12 hours after the murder, Gathright arrived at a family, a member's house, wearing all black clothing similar to what was observed on surveillance video. He went inside the house for a couple of hours and then returned outside around 1830 hours. While speaking on a cellular phone, Gathright was seen wiping or cleaning the vehicle's exterior and interior door handles with a rag. He also transferred multiple bags into the garage where a 2004 gold forerunner was located before leaving in the same forerunner. Just three days later, on June 26th, officers conducted a traffic stop on Sean Gathright. Inside the Forerunner, they found a Glock 9mm semi-automatic pistol, .223 rifle live rounds, and nine rifle spent casings. Although the pistol did not match the casings from the murder scene, the rifle casings were linked to two prior shootings. A search of Gathright's residence uncovered a gun safe with multiple rifles, including one equipped with a brass catcher. Spent 9mm shell casings found in the safe matched those at the murder scene. This discovery provided crucial evidence linking Gathright right to the crime. The evidence against the suspects was overwhelming. Phone records, surveillance footage, and physical evidence all pointed to a well-coordinated and premeditated attack. The investigation had successfully connected the dots, but the search for Davion Murphy continues. Although Fulio was ambushed and killed in a well-organized hit, this isn't the first time he or even his top op, Young and Ace, have been ambushed. The two gang leaders have found themselves in ambushes where they were lucky to survive. Fulio and Young and Ace ambushing each other. Before his tragic murder, Fulio was involved in a shooting in 2023, which left him in a wheelchair for months. Turns out Sean Gathright was also involved in that shooting. The feds found additional evidence against him at his house, which connects him to another shooting where he tried to take out Fulio, as well as a separate homicide. Detectives found that the spent casings from the pistol used in Julio Fulio's murder matched those from the earlier attempt on his life in October 2023. On October 6, 2023, Fulio's vehicle was ripped with bullet holes by his ops. The attack was swift and brutal, leaving Fulio with a gunshot wound to his foot and was quickly transported to UF Health Jacksonville for treatment. The next day, an Instagram story post appeared, seemingly from one of his parents. The message read, Keep Fulio my son in y'all prayers. He was shot last night in his hating city. At UF Health Jacksonville, Fulio's phone began to go crazy with messages from friends and fans, all warning him that his location had been leaked. The source of this leak? A nurse at the hospital allegedly revealed Fulio's location, putting his life in further the jeopardy. The nurse who worked at the hospital dropped my low top. Okay, so I got a lawsuit at the hospital right now. Determined to hold the hospital accountable, Julio Fulio took a bold step by filing a lawsuit against UF Health Jacksonville. The lawsuit alleges that the hospital failed to protect his privacy, thereby putting his life at risk. I don't know if she did it like tentatively or uh, on some funny uh, what she was on, but I know it wasn't like the right intentions. Like, 
I'm going through a lot of shit. You gonna put the post that? You know who I am, what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? The nurse was later fired for breaching Fulio's privacy and putting his life in danger. Two years earlier, he was in a similar situation. On November 8, 2021, Fulio was at a house on Ernest Street recording music with several others. The house, which had already been the subject of numerous complaints from neighbors about suspicious activity, became the center of a violent confrontation. Fulio told police he heard gunshots when he walked outside and the shooters were in a dark colored truck or SUV. Fulio, armed with two guns, returned fire in what he claims was self-defense. I shot back in self-defense. Y'all dumb. I shot back in self-defense. You don't think if I did something illegal, I would be in jail. The police put me in the back of the car. Fulio was grazed by a bullet, but refused to go to the hospital. Instead, he was seen being escorted to a car, limping from his injury. And in 2020, he was involved in yet another shooting, which saw him go to the hospital where he recorded a video dissing his ops. Bitch shot me, but didn't kill me. I'm Kendrick. Stupid. Ace has also found himself in similar situations. The last shooting he was involved in was back in March 2019. Ace had an electrifying performance at Club Vibe in Waycross, Georgia. For Ace, it was another successful night on stage. The concert went off without a hitch, leaving everyone in high spirits. As the night drew to a close, Ace and his entourage prepared to head back to their hotel, unaware of the danger that awaited them. At approximately 3.30 a.m., Ace and his affiliates arrived at the Hampton Inn on Brunswick Highway. The hotel would soon become the backdrop for a nightmarish turn of events. The group checked in expecting nothing more than a quiet retreat after a night of music and celebration. But as they settled in, the tranquility of the night was shattered. Reports began to surface of suspicious activity in the parking lot. Unknown to Ace and his friends, they were being watched, and the stage was set for a violent ambush. The peaceful night quickly descended into chaos as gunshots rang out, and people began to flee in terror. The peace at the Hampton Inn was replaced by a scene of panic and confusion, marking the beginning of a harrowing ordeal for Ace and his entourage. As the gunfire faded, the true horror of the ambush began to unfold. Waycross police were called to the Hampton Inn, responding to reports of people being chased in the parking lot by individuals with guns. The scene they encountered was nothing short of a nightmare. Near the hotel's pool, officers found 30-year-old Jeremy Alexander Brookins lying on the ground with multiple gunshot wounds. Despite the paramedics' best efforts, Brookins was declared dead at the scene. Brookins, known in the streets as Raylo, was a known 1200 gang member and was part of Ace's entourage that day. Turns out, just a month before he was gunned down, he was part part of the hit squad that took out one of Fulio's closest friends, Bibby. Unfortunately, he was caught by the bullets meant for Ace. Even his mom came out to say that her son was not the target. Inside the hotel, 29-year-old Dwayne DeMorris Starks was also found shot and injured. He was quickly taken to a nearby hospital for emergency medical treatment. The ambush had left one man dead and another fighting for his life. Ace, miraculously uninjured, cooperated fully with the investigators. His attorney, David Haas, released a statement confirming that Ace and his companions were working with the Waycross Police Department. The investigation quickly led to the arrest of three Jacksonville men hours after the shooting and were believed to be with Ace during the incident. 26-year-old Mark Isaac Jefferson, 18-year-old Leroy Gerard Whitaker, and 26-year-old Devante DeMorris Starks were all taken into custody. Jefferson, with a prior conviction for aggravated assault, faced charges of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and weed possession. Whitaker was charged with possession of a handgun without a license, reckless conduct, and possession of weed. Starks faced similar charges, including possession of a firearm and weed. Ace had survived the ambush, but his affiliates were put in jail. The rapper had also been ambushed one year before this incident, and the aftermath was nothing short of horrific. They follow me at a red light. My blood little brother died on the scene. You got shot eight times on this, and somehow you're the only one to survive. In June 2018, on a warm summer evening, Ace was out to celebrate a special occasion. June 5th marked the birthday of his younger brother, Trayvon Bullard, known in the streets as 23. Alongside them were close friends Royale Devon Smith Jr. and Jacoby Deshad Groover. The group chose a local favorite spot for the birthday dinner. Little did they know that the night would take an unimaginable turn. After the dinner, the four young men left the venue, their spirits high and their hearts full of the evening's festivities. They settled into their vehicle, ready to continue their night elsewhere. But as they pulled away, the unexpected horror unfolded in mere moments. A car, seemingly out of nowhere, approached their vehicle. As Ace was about to call his girlfriend on his phone, their ops started letting off shots without warning or provocation. So I'm calling him, I'm about to call him. Soon I, soon I pull my phone out, I get shot in my hand. See my whole hand, see all this is off. It, just, it grew back. Young Gene Ace, amidst the chaos, made a split-second decision fueled by instinct and brotherly love. He leaned over in a desperate attempt to shield his brother in the driver's seat, risking his own life in the process. I ain't gonna lie, I tried to like, like shit my little brother, 23. So I'm shielding him, trying to get him out of the car though. I'm pressing like the, the door, cause the door's locked. 
So I'm trying to press the unlock button, but it's, they still shooting. Tragically, his efforts were in vain, and the driver, along with two other passengers, succumbed to their injuries. The shooters have never been caught, and even Ace has refused to snitch on them. You know who did it? <laughs> He'd rather deal with them in the streets that see them in a courtroom. Fulio's killers, on the other hand, have no choice but to stay behind bars till their trial. Only time will tell how their case will go. But for these other guys who killed rappers, their fate is already sealed. Rappers killers in court. First up are XX Tentacion's killers. March 20th, 2023 would see the lives of Michael Boatwright, Dedrick Williams, and Trayvon Newsom change forever. All three defendants were found guilty of first degree murder of XX Tentacion. Each of them was handed two life sentences. The trial was full of drama as the defendants showed no remorse for their actions. One of the defendants, Michael Boatwright, was even bold enough to smile and blow kisses at X's family during court proceedings. While this was disturbing to watch, X's family was shocked and even more hurt by the stunt pulled by Boatwright in the courtroom. The stunt elicited strong emotions from X's family. While on the witness stand before the verdict was read, X's grand aunt called the defendants out for showing no empathy to the family they had destroyed. She was so mad that she wished their time behind bars would be hell and that they would rot in jail, saying, whatever time you're given and whichever hole you are sent, I hope it is hell. While everyone was shocked and offended at what happened during the eve, court proceedings, X's mom, Cleopatra Bernard, seemed the most hurt, and rightfully so. Her son had been murdered in cold blood, and her killers were not remotely remorseful for what they had done. She took to social media to express her emotions after the verdict was read, and also after the trio was sentenced. After all three defendants were found guilty of first-degree murder, she posted a story saying, you finally got justice, ya. Yeah. To Boatwright, who taunted her throughout the trial by blowing kisses, she said that she hopes that he gets the kiss he wants so bad in prison. She also had a few words for the other two saying, my hope for these other gentlemen is they will retain a firm grasp on the slippery soap. The judge had the most chilling words for the trio as they were shipped to prison. You turned a robbery into a murder. And on that day when you stood there and fired that weapon, you didn't just end one life. You effectively ended five lives, including your own. You will spend the rest of your life in prison. You'll spend every hour and every day and every week and every year of your life in that cell. And one day, they'll come and open up that cell in the morning and you'll have passed on. And only on that day will you have served your sentence, the judge said. The trio aren't the only ones caught on camera shooting and killing a rapper in cold blood. The infamous O Block 5 were caught on 4K murdering FBG Duck in a drive-by shooting. CCTV footage showed a black car stop in front of a store and armed men jump out and immediately start letting off shots as Duck tries to escape in vain. He was hit 16 times. They then jump back in the black vehicle and a gray Chrysler, which was also involved in the crime, sped away, leaving Duck to die. And on October 13th, 2020, the feds raided O'Block and arrested five men for FBG Duck's murder. These were C. Murder, Kenny Mack, Loss, C. Thang, and Muwap. The five were charged with murder, unlawful use of firearms, racketeering, and assault with dangerous weapons. The charges carried a mandatory minimum of life upon conviction. Another O Block member was arrested after the original five and was accused of dropping Duck's location on the tragic day. This was Ralph Turpin alias TZ. On the first day of trial, rapper Muwap took to Instagram to post this praying emoji. However, just like people in his comments section said, it was too late for him because in January this year, jury found all five guilty of Duck's murder. Lost C. Murda, Kenny Mack, and Muwap were found guilty of five of seven counts including murder and conspiracy to commit murder while C. Thang was found guilty of three counts. And TZ, who allegedly gave the shooters Duck's location, was found guilty of two counts. The six are yet to be sentenced, but it's unlikely they will ever see the light of day again. There isn't much hope for Fulio's killers. The evidence against the suspects was overwhelming. Phone records, surveillance footage, and physical evidence reveal a well-coordinated and premeditated attack. Will any of them turn and snitch to get a lighter sentence? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.